Hey everyone, with the close bait behind us, we thought we'd do a list of our top 5 changes we'd like to see in the final game. So at the end of the beta, Bandai sent surveys out to those who got a code which asked a dozen or so questions, some specifically about points where we'd already had an opinion on. Uh, for those that missed out on the beta, uh, we're certain there will be an open beta, most likely closer to release, so probably January with some improvements. One thing to quickly touch on is netcode, and that it needs to be optimized better, but that goes without saying really, and this was a beta specifically for netcode stress testing, so let's get into it. So at number 5 we have sound design. For those of you who have played J-Stars, you may or may not have noticed the sound design to be quite inconsistent in terms of awakenings, alts and specials. Every character's sound design seemed to differ in impact and balance. Uh, for example, check out these two clips from Jump Force of the beta, one of Gon's ult and the other of Yusuke's. <laughs> Now in my opinion Gon's ult sounded dry and grainy, uh, you could hear the stage music was a lot louder than Gon himself, where I feel he should be taking the centre here, not everything else around him. Uh, his transformation felt weak and his attack weaker. Uh, good sound design can really amplify the feel of this. Comparing that to Yusuke, where you can clearly hear the dynamic sound effects going into his ultimate and then the impact once it lands. This inconsistency continues throughout the characters in the beta and it did so in J-Stars as well. Uh, so number four we got stage transitions. Uh, throughout our playtime over two of the sessions, so four hours in total, we did not encounter one stage transition in an online match. Now, it may be due to everyone's lack of experience with the game, but I feel like in an actual high-speed online game, players aren't going to be purposefully trying to land a heavy followed by a normal attack in a specific area to activate a stage transition. Again, I could be wrong, but I feel the criteria for these are a bit too specific, unless this is intentional and developers want them to be rare occasions, but I can't know that for sure, as when playing against the computer they seem to do them almost every match. Uh, there's a reward for catching your opponent in a stage transition though, and that is that it decreases their awakening bar by a certain percentage, potentially preventing them from using an old or transformation for a while. Uh, another thing to note is that when it did happen in a CPU match, there was a loading period, followed by a burst of lag for a few seconds after, which really takes you out of the experience. I did not notice this problem when we played the E3 or TGS builds, so if Spike Chansoft want these to take skill and timing to activate the stage transitions, then that is all well and good, but please fix this loading and lag that immediately follows them. At number 3 we have Awakened Abilities or ults. At the beginning of every match you start with an emptied awaken bar, it builds up mostly by being the victim of attacks, uh, but it does slightly increase uh, by yourself guarding and attacking your opponent. Uh, when it's at half full you can use your awakened ability or ultimate, and when it's full you can use your awakening, which transforms some characters but essentially it is just a buff. When you have enough meter to use your ult, you then want to get your opponent in a combo chain and activate it so you get a guaranteed hit and do some heavy damage. But it's not always the case. For an example, check out this clip of uh, me against the computer. <laughs> If you couldn't see what happened, I had the computer in a combo chain, uh, I activated my ult and in the clip it did minimal damage, but in another clip I had, which unfortunately is deleted now, uh, it missed completely, despite being in a combo chain and they weren't blocking. Some ults give the opposing player time to either guard or outright evade them because of the way they're programmed. There seems to be a gap in some of the cutscenes where the opposing players regain control of their character and can either block or dodge. We noticed this with a few characters actually, Goku, Freezer, Naruto and Seiya. 
Um, there may have been more that we missed off of the list, but notably it seems to be characters that don't engage to make their ult land, rather they have a, a ranged attack. For example, Ichigo, when activated, rushes to the opponent, and if they aren't blocking and don't move out of the way, like evade or anything, it will be a guaranteed hit. The same with the other characters similar to this, but Naruto, for example, has a ranged ultimate attack that can be used and will activate regardless of any criteria, and it seems in a lot of cases that a block is the likely outcome. I remember this also being a problem in J-Stars, and again it was with Naruto and other characters too, but it seems annoying because Spike Chunsoft haven't really learned or bothered to correct this. Uh, each character's ult should land if they have a player mid-combo and that player hasn't evaded away in time before the ult is activated. There is not a reason why a player should be able to block an ultimate attack if they were not already blocking or evading. Please fix this, Spike. So number two is the online lobby. I'm sure everyone will agree with this, which is why it's so high on the list. The online lobby was absolute trash. The motion blur on the camera was nauseating, coupled with the camera and character speed, and you have a recipe for a seizure. The frame rate was probably hitting around 20 FPS, if not lower, which topped it off and made things worse. Unsurprisingly, this was an actual question on the survey we mentioned about at the beginning of the video asking whether you felt the camera made you feel sick. But it's more than just that, it was everything we just touched on. This needs to be addressed in the main game, as I think the online lobby will be the central hub of a lot of features, so therefore it needs quite a lot of improvement. Spike Jonsoft have said we will be able to interact with other players, so the potential to be a good social hub is there, but only after improvement. Now, number one is match length, and I'm sure everyone who has played the beta expected this one. The match length as it stands right now is quite frankly uh, way too short. We did make a video a few weeks ago regarding improvements we've seen from the E3 to TGS builds from our hands-on impressions, uh, but I think we may have jumped the gun a bit because we said the match length was at a good balance there, but this was probably due to the lack of familiarity we had with the game, but now we have some more experience we feel opposite to what we originally thought. So as it works now, for those who don't know, it's best of three, which is great, and it should stay that way. However, the health bar needs to be increased or the damage output needs to be decreased. Because as it stands, the matches do feel like they just need a tad more of something. Matches don't really go on long enough, and even with two, three rounds, the health bar just isn't cutting it. A perfectly landed ult will drain almost half the opponent's bar and certain specials do more damage than others. I feel there also needs to be another game mode separate to this one that we played in the beta, which is going to be just standard versus, that being 3v3. Seen this being requested a lot on the subreddit and throughout the community, but essentially it is each of your characters has their own health bar. Um, because I didn't really see the point in switching characters mid-game unless I accidentally was supposed to use a support attack but I switched to another character instead. Again though, this was a question that was specifically asked in the beta for which I can see on the subreddit a lot of people share the same opinion that the match at length is too short. So I'm confident this will be addressed come the open beta, if there is one, or the launch of the game. So that's our top five changes we want to the game. If we've missed any that you think should be addressed, then let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. We have more beta online matches coming up soon. Bye.